Welcome guys to another session on dynamic programming and today we are going to be looking at problem 6.25 in the DPV book. This problem deals with a three partition of n numbers and we do it in such a way that each partition has the same uh, total sum. So with that let's quickly look at the problem three partition given n numbers a1, a2, a n you have to break these into three sections such that each one will sum to a third of the total sum. And you have to do it in such a way that the complexity is a, fun a polynomial function of n and sigma ai. So now how do we do this? The way to solve this problem is by assuming that you have two backpacks and you're trying to fill both backpacks and the size of these backpacks obviously is going to be sigma ai over 3 for both of these backpacks. So, so w by 3, w by 3 in this case is what we want to end up in each backpack. And the third backpack, if you do this, the third backpack will also have w by 3. But we don't have to solve in extra dimensions. We just have to solve in two dimensions, sorry, three dimensions by using two uh, axes for the backpacks and one for the items that we have. And you will get the whole solution. So that's the gist of the uh, solution. Let's look at how it will actually uh, look and feel when you try to implement this. So we're going to think of this problem as a three-dimensional problem. Normally when we try to solve 0-1 backpack problem, we are really in two dimensions. If you look at this, you're really on one side of this cube. In this case, what will happen is that you will represent x as one of the, f the first backpack, y is the second backpack and its values and so um, so that's what will happen and in this remaining dimension you will put the all the ai elements right so you uh, starting with a zero zero means there is no elements right so that's the extra thing that you will introduce if you have n elements this will be n plus one because you'll introduce a zero here and then x will go from zero to w by 3 and y will go from 0 to w by 3. So that will make up this cube here. And then the the thing is that what we will do is we'll walk through every element and not just on the surface, but imagine an element in the middle which will have some size on the x, some size on the y. So you really any box in the middle would represent like you have two backpacks, one of size x, one of size y. And then uh, as you descend down this dimension, you will see that you have some number of elements and you're looking at the ith element of the 0-1 problem. And the problem then uh, boils down to when you take that item, either you cannot use it or you can use it on the x or you can use it on the y. If you cannot use it, what it means is that you have to go throw it in the last backpack, right? The backpack three, so to speak. And so that's that's how this problem works. And so if we look at how the actual initialization condition and the recursive equation works, first of all, imagine that this is the corner where the X and the Y backpacks are both have value zero and the number of elements is zero because I equals zero on this corner here. And if I equals zero, which means you have no elements, then we assume that this is, um, this is true. Right? This is always possible to do this one, this corner, because there are no there are no elements, but also there is no backpack size. And if no backpack size, then this is true. Now, all other things are false. All on this top, uh, so if you go next, you will see that everything else here is going to be false. Why? Because if you have any size backpack and you have no elements, you cannot produce that size because you have no elements. You cannot produce these sizes. So all of this surface is going to be filled with false, except for this corner, which is going to be true. Okay, so now once you have understood this boundary condition, this initial condition, the recursion equation will look somewhat like this. If you look at any block below this layer, below this top layer, um, then you have three possibilities. If you look at x, y, i, which is one backpack is of the size x, the other backpack size y, and then you have, you're on the ith element, which is you've descended down this side. So when you look at any of those elements, there are three possibilities. When you pick up this element AI, then what will happen is either it fits none of these backpacks, in which case you're just going to look up and find the value above, 
that three-dimensional box above. And that's going to come from x, y, i minus 1. The other possibility is it fits the first backpack. And so you, you look in the x dimension backwards and look for x minus a i, y, and i minus 1. Right? Just like 0, 1 backpack. The, the only difference is that you know you if you fit this side, then you go backwards and see if the previous value was, if you remove this, was, the tr was there a true in the previous value? So you look for that. The third alternative is that it doesn't fit the x backpack, but it fits the y backpack. So the AI would be subtracted from there, and then you go look backwards in the previous row and look for if that was true, then this value could be fit, could fit in the y backpack. So if any of these conditions is true, then that possibility becomes true. And then you fill up the remaining, and then in this case, uh, the corner farthest, which would be which would be this corner here, this would have this would hold the answer. Because the here you would be w by three in this dimension, w by three in this dimension, and then all n items consumed in this corner here, this would be your answer. So, in a sense, this is a zero one backpack problem, but it's being solved in two dimensions instead of one, and that is the only difference in this problem. And it ends up being, if you if you look at it, the nice thing is that it's it's all uh, so symmetric that you end up with w by 3 w by 3 on each side and then you are left with if this if these are true then you're left with a third backpack having um, w by 3 uh, as well because all these must sum to w so that's um, that's that now regarding the complexity and the polynomial time algorithm that was desired you can see that here this is w by 3 w by 3 and n deep or you could say n plus one and et cetera, et cetera, because there's one zero, zero, zero here. And so, yeah, it, it's effectively in the order of w, w, and n. So w square and n, and that is the desired behavior or request in the problem. So we have solved the problem in polynomial time with w, w, and n. So w and n. And therefore, this answer is correct. And that is the solution for today. And um, if you guys liked uh, the problem solution, then give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. I'm going to continue to bring you uh, closer to the end of this, this um, chapter. And we are on problem 6.25, only five more problems to go. So it is exciting. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.